Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChigiChicken.com here with a Photoshop beginner tutorial. Before I get into the actual tutorial itself, I want to thank everyone that's been so patient and waiting for me to get this tutorial out. I know it's kind of been a while, but it's because I've been sick with a cough, and that doesn't exactly help when it comes to making tutorials. I mean, I'm sure you guys don't want me coughing through a tutorial or, you know, anything like that. And also, I would like to give a thanks to everyone that's been giving us support on Facebook. Here's our little Facebook page. I want to thank all the people that have been posting and giving us feedback and stuff like that. Like these guys right here, you know, show me some support saying, yeah, go ahead and make that tutorial. You rock. Stuff like that. So if you would like to become a fan of our Facebook page, there is a link on our channel. Or I'll just put a link in the description. It's probably easier for you guys. Alright, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this pen tool tutorial. And for now, you guys don't have to follow along. I'm just going to go ahead and just show you some examples about like the pen tool and stuff like that. Just so you get an idea of certain characteristics of the pen tool before you actually try to use it. Because it's actually a very tricky tool to learn. Actually, you probably already know that, which is why you're even watching this tutorial. Anyway, so there are a couple of things that you would probably like to know about the pen tool. The first question I'd like to answer is, is the pen tool necessary to learn? And the simple answer to that is no. You do not need to learn how to use the pen tool. You can actually use the polygonal lasso tool, the marquee tool, and stuff like that just fine to get stuff that you want done. However, is the pen tool useful? The answer to that is yes. If you learn how to use it properly, it is a very handy tool to learn and to use when it comes to your Photoshop stuff. So what is so great about the pen tool? Well, the greatest thing about the pen tool is that it works with pads. And the great thing about pads is that they're not pixel based. They're actually used using math. And no, you're not going to have to learn math. It's That's all up to the computer. But thanks to the computer using math to draw out these paths, they can actually be manipulated and resized and all that without making things like really pixelated. Like if you try to make a small picture big, it usually, you know, pixelate it. But with paths, when you make a small path larger, it actually keeps its quality because it's all based on math, not pixels. And the other great thing about paths is that you can actually go back and edit them whenever you want. And you can save them in your Photoshop files, you can transfer them between Photoshop files, all that stuff. And you can just have so much flexibility with it, which makes it such a useful tool to use. So I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of what a path is like. So I'm going to just use my pencil. I'm going to make a point right there, and I'll click and drag up here, and I'll click down there, and then I'll go back like a connect the dots kind of thing, and there we go. We've got a path, but I'm just going to fix this up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer, and voila. Okay. So every path has the same basic parts to it. For example, these three points right here are what we call anchor points. And with these three anchor points and the path that connects all three of them, we get the shape that we're trying to create. So in this case, a kind of semicircle sort of thing. But as you can see with this particular anchor point right here, it's got these two handles sticking out of it. And a simple way to look at these handles is that they represent an in and an out. And it can go either way, it doesn't really matter. But these handles determine how much a line curves between two anchor points. So just to demonstrate, you can see that between these two points right here, it curves just a little bit towards the end because of this little handle right here. But what would happen if I were to click and drag this more outward? Well, you can see that the path is trying to follow that handle a little bit until it finally just zooms back into the anchor point right here. So the length and the direction of the handle determines how much the line between two anchor points bend. And something that I would like to point out is that these two handles right here don't have to be perfectly linear. They can actually go completely opposite directions. And to do that, I would go back to my pen tool, 
and I would hold my pencil over one of the little handles right here and I would hold the alt key or if you're on a Mac that would be the option key and I can just click and drag and I can just bend it down this way and so as you can see since this is pretty much kind of following the line it's very very straight it's very linear because this is the direction that the path itself is trying to follow however on this side we've got the handle going out this way so the path is trying to bend and so that's the basic concept behind handles and as you can see there aren't actually any handles on either of these points which is why the line connecting these two is so perfectly linear and if I wanted to actually go and select this point and manipulate it I would have to go back to my other tool over here I'm gonna to go to the direct selection tool where you can hit A and so if I select this point you can see that it's selected because it turned into a little filled up box right there and then I can swap back to my pen tool with the letter P and if I go to this anchor point and hold the alt key it turns into this little pointing arrow sort of thing and I can click and drag off of that point and it makes handles for me and these handles can go wherever I want and so that kind of determines the curve of the path itself so I'm sure you guys would like to see how you can actually use this in terms of like using it in an actual like picture or a Photoshop document or something like that so what I went ahead and did for you is I put together this little tribal ring with a little bit of help from my friend Brad and what I actually did was he gave me a picture I'll actually go ahead and show you that picture this was the picture that he sent me and I actually used paths to trace out this picture and this is what I was able to get in the end and as you can see it actually turned out pretty well it's actually it's actually pretty crisp and that's the power of paths and I actually kind of actually saved the the path in here in case you wanted to, to look at it I'll give you a link to it later but in any case this is what I want you to use as practice so because YouTube like won't make it very easy for you to actually see the the lines and stuff I'm gonna change the fill of this down to zero change the opacity to 25 and I'm gonna give it a black stroke I'm gonna put it on the inside and put it down to one pixel now if I zoom in I can actually see what I'm doing and you guys will actually be able to follow along oh by the way I want to point out that when you're working with the pen tool I'd say it's very useful to enable the scrolling with your scroll wheel and to do that you can actually go to your preferences there in your general preferences and there it is right there zoom with scroll wheel if you check mark that and hit OK you can scroll in and out on your mouse and it helps a lot when it when it comes to using your pen tool so in any case now if you guys would like to follow along that would be awesome so I'm gonna zoom in right here on this little curve in the bottom left of the diamond of the diamond ring and so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I would go about making a path that outlines this little diamond tribal ring so what I would do is choose a starting point so maybe right here and click and drag and make sure that wherever you're dragging to kind of matches up with the general shape of whatever it is that you're trying to trace and then I'm gonna go past this curve somewhere over here and I'm gonna click and drag while still kind of following the the shape of the diamond ring but while you drag this handle keep an eye on what's happening to the path behind it that way you get an idea of where you need to be bending these handles so that it kind of follows the path that you're trying to create that follows the outline of your picture and all that stuff so with just those two anchor points I was able to make a pretty decent little path so I'll just go ahead and keep on going maybe I'll go somewhere over here I'll click and drag kind of follow this a little bit until it looks like it matches up with the outline going that way and I'll keep going along maybe down here past this little curve right here click and drag and oh, oh right about there looks about good to me follows nice and well and that's basically the general idea is you just kinda go along making adjustments and stuff like that 
And just to give you a little example, I'm just going to stop right there. If I zoom in, here is the path itself, but as you can see, the actual outline is a little bit further out. So how would I actually go about fixing that, even though I've already drawn out my anchor point? Well, it's actually pretty easy to actually go back and fix something like this up. You would actually go back to one of these anchor points right here, and if you hold the Alt key, you can click and drag and that will actually move the line because you actually manipulated the anchor or not the anchor point but the the handle going into this side of the anchor point so that kind of fixed where that was going and now I can zoom out zoom back into my next point and as you can see this is a very sharp point so instead of clicking and dragging I'm just gonna click and that will finish that off right there just kinda curves in a little bit then I will go back and click and drag to make that little curve right there and that would actually call good right there okay so I'm gonna mosey along a little bit just kinda showing you how this works okay now here's something common that will happen so as you can see I've got this anchor point kind of off of where I want it I kind of missed a little bit and I wanna nudge it over a little bit so in order to move this anchor point you're gonna have to hold the control key assuming you're still on your pen tool and you can actually click and drag and reposition where that anchor point is and also over here I noticed that this isn't following very well because the curve is a little bit different and kinda goes up and then over a little bit I, I, I exaggerated that a little bit with my pen but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the alt key and click and drag this over that way but as you can see that kind of messed up where this is going over here as you can see the the line is kind of missing a little bit so if I drag my handle this way that will actually manipulate it so that it follows that just where I want it so that is the general idea when it comes to actually making these things keep in mind the depending on how far out you drag your um, your handle that will manipulate how much it actually tries to f follow uh, that particular handle. And actually, real fast, I want to give you guys a little bit of... Um, I wasn't actually planning on doing this, but now that I thought about it, it's a very nifty trick in my opinion. Say you have something that goes across and then has a very sharp bend and then goes like that. It's, so how would you actually go about doing something like that? Well, here's how you would actually go about doing something like that. So I'll just make one anchor point going this way, and I'll make another anchor point going this way. So as you can see, this is the uh, the path that we're going, but we want this to be really sharp. So what do you think you would do? You would actually take one anchor point, or one handle, drag it way out that way, and take the other one and drag it way out this way, and that will actually give you your little sharp turn because it since this is so long it's gonna go out quite a ways before finally bending and going back to this one and since this one's equally as long it's gonna bend really sharp and so that's the that's the kind of trick that I was able to figure out while moseying around with this little tribal ring right here Ah, uh, another thing that you guys probably would like to know I'll just get rid of that real fast um, something else that would be actually really useful to you people um, let's say I have this going that way, that goes that way, and then I put an anchor point right here, and then I go like this. Uh, let's say I actually wanted this part to actually be really pointy, but as you can see, it actually, if I bend in, or if I zoom in a lot, it actually curves. What you can actually do is go to your anchor point, hold the control key and give that a click and that will select it for you and just hold the alt key and instead drag one anchor point or one handle down the other way and just manipulate these anchor points like so and doing that will actually get you that point that you're looking for so in any case that is the general concept behind the actual pen tool so go ahead and grab the Tribal Ring PSD off of our website. Give that a try. Give it some practice. Maybe you can get the full-on Tribal Ring that I was able to get. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please 
you know, push the like button in the bottom left hand corner of this video. That helps us a lot, knowing that you actually appreciate what we do. So, um, yeah, that's about all I've got for you. So, thanks again. I will see you next time.